To the aforementioned subject matter, please find enclosed here with copy of the orders dated the 12th of January 2020 and the 21st of January 2021 passed by Honorable Supreme Court of India, which are self-explanatory. The Honbal Apex Court beat its order dated the 21st of January 2021 had directed the state governments to file affidavits. Additional I on subject matter, please find enclosed here with copy of the orders dated the 12th of January 2020 and the 21st of January 2021 passed by Honbal Supreme Court of India, which are self-explanatory. The Honbal Apex Court beat its order dated the 21st of January 2021 had directed the state governments to file affidavits. Additional affidavits before the Honbal Apex Court giving details of the number of child witnesses, victims of human trafficking who are required to depose in courts which are far away from the place of their residence in a different state. It is also added here that the Department of Women and Child Development, GNCT of Delhi, has already filed a status report before the Honbal Court in the instant matter through Shish. Chirag M. Shroff, advocate on record, GNCT of Delhi, MOP, 9811032077, email, office at Shroff Associates. Co. In, apprising the status, details. About the video conferencing facilities available in the Child Welfare Committee's Juvenile Justice Boards and Govit. Run child care institutions. In view of above, it is requested to do the needful and file the additional affidavit accordingly in the Honbal Supreme Court of India. The next date of hearing in the instant matter is the 18th of March 2021. Meeting notice. The meeting has been scheduled on the 3rd of December 2021 at 10.30 a.m. onwards in the conference hall, first floor, Department of Women and Child Development, GNCT of Delhi, ISBT Building, Kashmir Gate, Delhi 110006 with regard to finalizing of the Delhi State Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children rules. Members of the committee constituted for finalizing the said rules are requested to make it convenient to attend the meeting on above date and time. Sub, status of children residing in Jodi Home for Boys and Girls C, O Light Life Freedom, Malvia Nagar, New Delhi, Reg. This is in reference to the subject matter captioned above and in light of writ petition, civil, 7342017 titled, Light Life Freedom vs. GNCT of Delhi and ORS pending adjudication before the Honble High Court of Delhi. In this context, it is requested to provide the last and next date of production before the CWC-8 with respect to all the children residing in Jodi Home for Boys and Girls for further necessary action at this end. Sub, status in the matter of W. P.C. 7342017 titled, Light Life Freedom vs. GNCT D and ORS Reg. In reference to the subject captioned above, it is requested to provide the status of hearing in the aforementioned matter and with reference to the Honbal Court order dated the 2nd of December 2020, if the petitioner has filed the amended petition, it is further requested to provide a copy of the same to the department for further necessary action. Sub, children in need of care and protection residing in Jodi Home for Boys and Girls C, O Light Life Freedom, Malvia Nagar, New Delhi, Reg. This is in reference to the subject matter captioned above. In this context, it is to inform that a writ petition, civil, 7342017, titled, Light Life Freedom vs. GNCT of Delhi and ORS, has been filed by Ms. Jodi Agarwal, President, NGO Light Life Freedom, pending adjudication before the Honbal High Court of Delhi. It is to further inform that the department has already rejected the application for registration of Jodi Home for Boys and Girls Under Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015 on the 24th of June 2019 with a direction to produce all the children residing in the CCI to Concerned Child Welfare Committee for further... Appropriate decision. The Child Welfare Committee, CWC, concerned i.e. CWC 8 beat its order dated the 26th of June 2019 has also directed to President Jody Home C. O Light Life Freedom to produce all the children residing in the Jody Home. It is also important to mention here that, in contravention to the provisions laid down under the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015 and Model Rules 2016, the children residing in Jody Home for Boys and Girls C. O N G O Light Life Freedom are not being produced before CWC 8, Calca G, New Delhi. Neither any efforts are being made for their rehabilitation and restoration. It is requested to look into the facts as stated above and do the needful considering the best interest of children residing therein at Jody Home for Boys and Girls C. O N G O Light Life Freedom. Sub. Amendment in the scheme of financial assistance given to the children of incarcerated reg. In reference to the aforementioned subject matter, please find enclosed here with a copy of letter along with enclosures received from OSD to die. Chief Minister, GNCT of Delhi for kind perusal and further necessary action at your end. Attendance certificate. This is to certify the chish. Vineet Kumar Singh, welfare officer, contractual, has attended this office for the month of February, 2021. The officer has not availed nay leaves in the month of February, 2021. Yogita Gupta, asked, director, CPU. Sub, order dated the 12th of January, 2020 and the 21st of January, 2021, passed by the Honorable Supreme Court of India in the matter W. P. C. R. L. 274, 2020, it's titled, Santosh Viswanath Shind and ANR. Versus Union of India and ORS Reg. In reference to the aforementioned subject matter, please find enclosed here with copy of the orders dated the 12th of January 2020 and the 21st of January 2021 passed by Honbal Supreme Court of India, which are self-explanatory. Their residence in a different state. The Honbal Apex Court beat its order dated the 21st of January 2021 had directed the state governments to file affidavits, additional affidavits before the Honbal Apex Court giving details of the number of child witnesses, victims of human trafficking who are required to depose in courts which are far away from the place of 
Status details about the video conferencing facilities available in the Child Welfare Committee's Juvenile Justice Boards and Govit. Run child care institutions. It is also added here that the Department of Women and Child Development, GNCT of Delhi, has already filed a status report before the Honble Court in the instant matter through Shish. Chirag M. Shroff, advocate on record, GNCT of Delhi, MOP, 9811032077, email, office at Shroff Associates. Co. In, apprising the. The department beat its letter dated the 2nd of November 2021 had requested Special Police Unit for Women and Children, Malvia Nagar, to file the Adetinoel affidavit upon which a communication dated the 26th of February 2021 has been received back in the department requesting to pursue the matter to unit concerned I. E. Crime Branch, Delhi Police. In view of above, it is requested to do the needful and file the additional affidavit accordingly in the Honorable Supreme Court of India. The next date of hearing in the instant matter is the 18th of March 2021. Sub W. PC 10945 2020 It's titled, Aisha Kumari vs. State of NCT of Delhi and Ors. Reg. In reference to the email dated the 2nd of November 2021 on the aforementioned subject matter, I am directed to inform that the prayers made, relief sought by the petitioner in her writ petition require action on the part of Delhi Police and Sub-Divisional Magistrate of the District Concerned. It is also informed that the Department of Women and Child Development, GNCT of Delhi Veed notification dated the 16th of October 2009, copy and closed, had already nominated the sub-divisional magistrate of the area as child marriage prohibition officer for his respective jurisdiction who have the powers to investigate the relevant. Cognizable cases is as exercised by a police officer under Chapter 5, 7, 11 and 12 of the Code of Criminal Procedure, 1973. In view of above, it is requested to do the needful in terms of the direction contained in the Honble Court order dated the 1st of November 2021. This issues with prior approval of the competent authority. Meeting notice. In continuation to earlier meeting notice scheduled for the 3rd of December 2021 with regard to finalizing of the Delhi State Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children rules, the said meeting has now been rescheduled for the 18th of March 2021 at 10.30 a.m. onwards in the conference hall, first floor, Department of Women and Child. Development, GNCT of Delhi, ISBT Building, Kashmir Gate, Delhi 110006. Members of the committee constituted for finalizing the said rules are requested to make it convenient to attend the meeting on above date and time. Sub, information in our, O Welfare Officer, regular, contractual, as on the 1st of January 2021 who have continued five years of tenure upon the same post at same place. In reference to letter F. 631, ADMN, Ms. 2020-19,351st-53 dated the 25th of February 2021. In this context, the information in our, O Welfare Officer, regular, contractual, as on the 1st of January 2021 who have continued five years of tenure upon the same post at same place in respect of this unit may be treated as nil. However, it is also informed that Ms. Aziz Fatima, Welfare Officer, contractual, will be completing five years of tenure in this unit in the month of April 2021. Sub W. PC 10945-2020. It's titled, Aisha Kumari vs. State of NCT of Delhi and Ors. Reg. Please find enclosed here with copy of letter no. F. 11, MISC 2019, HP 2, 2171, dated the 16th of March 2021, received from Home, Police 2, Department, GNCT of Delhi on the aforementioned subject matter. In this context, I am directed to inform that this department feed notification dated the 16th of October 2009, copy and closed, had already nominated the subdivisional magistrate of the area as child marriage prohibition officer for his respective jurisdiction who have the powers to investigate the relevant cognizable cases as is exercised by a police officer under Chapter 5, 7, 11, and 12 of the Code of Criminal Procedure, 1973. Thus, in light of the above-mentioned notification, it is requested to issue necessary directions to the officers, officials concerned for compliance of the directions of Honble Court R. T. Prayers I and II is mentioned in the letter dated the 16th of March 2021 of Home Department, GNCT of Delhi and apprise the same directly to the Govit. Council, this issues with prior approval of the competent authority. Please find below the details of new court case received by this unit for information and perusal of worthy minister, WCD. 3. Gist of the case, the instant petition has been filed by the petitioner being aggrieved by the actions on the part of the concerned authorities' respondents, i.e. Theft of WCD, souped. Fulwari Children Home for Boys, I, Alipore and Child Welfare Committee, Alipore who have failed to adhere to their Duties under the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection Act 2015 is till date the petitioner's college fees have not been reimbursed paid by the respondents being their responsibility based on which he had enrolled himself in the college and had further taken loans from his friends third parties for the payment of his college fees. Sub order dated the 16th of March 2021 passed by the Honble High Court of Delhi in the matter W. P. C. No. 7271 2020 it's titled Dr. Swati Garg vs. Department of Women and Child Development in Ors Reg. With reference to the subject mentioned above, I am directed to inform that the Honble Delhi High Court beat order dated the 16th of March 2021 in the aforementioned court matter had passed certain directions which require urgent attention. A copy of the said order is also enclosed for information and reference. The operational part of the directions given by Honble Court at point no. 3 and 4 of the order dated the 16th of March 2021 is reproduced here under for ready reference. 3. 
The said interim order, dated the 1st of October 2020, shall continue, subject to the condition that the petitioner would not disturb the hearings of the Child Welfare Committee in any manner whatsoever, and shall regularly attend the hearings of the Child Welfare Committee. 4. The respondent shall also ensure that the petitioner is not prevented from attending the Child Welfare Committee hearings. If required, the hearings of the Child Welfare Committee can be video recorded for the purposes of record. Thus, in view of the above directions contained in the order dated the 16th of March 2021, it is requested that appropriate action might be taken in order to ensure compliance of the directions of Honville Court. If required, the functioning is planned by you can be discussed with CPU team at WCDH. Q. This issues with the prior approval of competent authority. Sub. Order dated the 16th of March 2021 passed by the Honville High Court of Delhi in the matter W. P. C. No. 7271-2020. It's titled Dr. Swati Garg vs. Department of Women and Child Development in ORS Reg. With reference to the subject mentioned above, I am directed to inform that the Honville Delhi High Court beat order dated the 16th of March 2021 in the aforementioned court matter had passed certain directions which require urgent attention. A copy of the said order is also enclosed for information and reference. The operational part of the directions given by Honville Court at point no. 3 and 4 of the order dated the 16th of March 2021 is reproduced here under for ready reference. 3. The said interim order, dated the 1st of October 2020, shall continue, subject to the condition that the petitioner would not disturb the hearings of the Child Welfare Committee in any manner whatsoever, and shall regularly attend the hearings of the Child Welfare Committee. 4. The respondent shall also ensure that the petitioner is not prevented from attending the Child Welfare Committee hearings. If required, the hearings of the Child Welfare Committee can be video recorded for the purposes of record. Thus, in view of the above directions contained in the order dated the 16th of March 2021, you are requested to comply with the directions of Honble Corden to ensure effective functioning of the Child Welfare Committee. This issues with the prior approval of competent authority. Please find below the details of new court case received by this unit for information and perusal of worthy minister, WCD. Please find below the details of new court case received by this unit for information and perusal of worthy minister, WCD. This is in continuation to this office email dated dated the 26th of March 2021 bead which the draft of Delhi State JJCPC rules was shared with all thereby requesting to send suggestions, comments on the draft latest by the 4th of October 2021 but the same is still awaited. It is therefore once again requested to send the suggestions, comments on the draft at the earliest in order to prepare consolidated points to be further discussed in the next meeting of the Rule Drifting Committee. Accordingly, the next meeting notice will be issued in due course of time to take the things to a logical end. Sub. Additional information called for AIC 2853-30-7-2020-DH. Ref. NHRC email communication dated the 15th of April 2021 WRT case no. 2853-30-7-2020-DH. In reference to the subject mentioned above, please find enclosed here with copy of the email communication dated the 15th of April 2021 along with annexures received from AST. Registrar, Law, National Human Rights Commission, NHRC, addressed to the worthy secretary, WCD, which is self-explanatory. The assistant registrar, Law, NHRC, through its email communication has requested that the additional complete report in the case no. 2853-30-7-2020-DH is sent to NHRC latest by the 20th of June 2021 for further consideration by the Commission. Thus, it is requested to look into this matter and submit the desired documents directly to NHRC under intimation to this office. In continuation to this office email dated the 26th of March 2021 bead which the draft of Delhi State JJCPC rules was shared with all thereby requesting to send suggestions, comments on the draft latest by the 4th of October 2021 but the same are still awaited. It is therefore once again requested to send the suggestions, comments on the draft within a week positively in order to prepare consolidated points which can be presented before the rule drafting committee. In the wake of no response being received by you, we will presume that you have no comments to make. Accordingly, the next meeting is proposed to held on the 10th of June 2021 at 10 a.m. in a virtual mode to take things to a logical conclusion. Sub. Requirement of files bearing CD no. Underscore and underscore reg. In reference to the subject mentioned above, it is to inform that W. PC 4288-2021st titled Amita Mangar for Boys vs. National Commission for Protection of Child Rights and ORS and W. PC 4236-2021st titled Kushi Rainbow Home for Girls vs. National Commission for Protection of Child Rights and ORS are pending. Before the Honville Delhi High Court, the next date of hearing in both the matters is scheduled for the 27th of July 2021 and the department has to file counter affidavits and the files bearing no. As above would be required to obtain facts, information to be incorporated in the affidavit to be filed before the Honville High Court of Delhi. The files as mentioned above were submitted in person on. Thus, the undersigned had been directed by the competent authority to request you to send back the two files bearing no. To the department at the earliest for further necessary action. Sub. Collection of information with regard to orphan minor children who have lost one or both of the parents in the NCT of Delhi, Reg. Ref. Honville Delhi High Court order dated the 6th of March 2021 in the matter WP. C. 3031-2020 and connected matters. In reference to the subject mentioned above, it is to inform that the Honville High Court of Delhi while hearing the matter W. 
PC 3031-2020 ETS and connected matters on the 6th of March 2021 was pleased to pass following directions at para 26 of the said order. We also direct the GNCTD to utilize its large workforce of Anganwadi workers, who are stated to be 10,775 in number, to collect information with regard to the orphaned minor children who have lost one or both of the parents in the NCT of Delhi, and to provide the information to the concerned CWC. Once the information is gathered with regard to the orphaned children, the CWC concerned should take all measures, as required by them under the Juvenile Justice Act, without waiting for any further directions from the court. Thus, in order to comply with the directions as mentioned above passed by the Honble Court, it is requested to issue necessary directions to the Child Development Project Officers, CDPOs being the controlling point of Anganwadi centers in the NCT of Delhi to supply information with regard to orphaned minor children who have lost one or both of the parents in the NCT of Delhi to the District Child Protection Officers, DCPUs, for onward submission to the Child Welfare Committee concerned. This issues with prior approval of the competent authority. Sub, implementation of directions passed by the Honble Supreme Court of India in the matter SMWPC 4 of 2020 and Ray, contagion of COVID-19 virus in children protection homes. In reference to the subject mentioned above, please find enclosed here with copy of order dated the 6th of July 2021 passed by the Honble Supreme Court of India in the matter SMWPC 4 of 2020 and Ray, contagion of COVID-19 virus in children protection homes which is self-explanatory. The Honble Apex Court had given various directions at point no. 1 to 9 on page 16 to 18 of the order dated the 6th of July 2021 which requires immediate action on the part of authorities concerned i.e. child welfare committees, district child protection units, etc. The operative parts of the directions given by the Honble Court are placed below for immediate action. 1. To continue identifying the children who have become orphans or lost a parent after March 2020 either due to COVID-19 or otherwise and upload their data on the website of the NCPCR without any delay. The identification of the affected children can be done through Childline 1098, Health Officials, Panchayati Raj, Institutions, Police Authorities, NGOs, etc. 2. To contact the affected child and his guardian immediately on receipt of information about the death of the parent, parents. Assessment shall be made about the suitability and willingness of the guardian to take care of the child. It should also be ensured that adequate provisions are made for ration, food, medicine, clothing, etc. for the affected child. Financial assistance to which the disconsolate child is entitled to under the prevailing schemes by the central government and the state government's union territories should be provided without any delay. 3. The DCPO to also provide his phone number and the name and phone number of the local official who can be contacted by the guardian and the child. There should be a regular follow-up with the child at least once in a month. 4. If prima facie it is opined that the guardian is not suitable to take care of the child, the child should produce by DCPO before the CWC immediately. 5. To make efforts for continuance of education of the children both in government as well as in private schools. 6. White publicity should be given to the provisions of the JJ Act 2015 and the prevailing schemes of the Union of India and the state governments, union territories which would benefit the affected children. 7. To take the assistance of government servants at the Gram Panchayat level to monitor 18 the welfare of the disconsolate children who are devastated by the catastrophe of losing their parent, parents. Sub, implementation of directions passed by the Honble Supreme Court of India in the matter SMWPC 4 of 2020 and Ray, contagion of COVID-19 virus in children protection homes. Thus, in view of the foregoing, all the district child protection officers are requested to take appropriate action at their end to comply with the directions given by the Honble Court on the 6th of July 2021. In reference to the subject mentioned above, please find enclosed here with copy of order dated the 6th of July 2021 passed by the Honble Supreme Court of India in the matter SMWPC 4 of 2020 and Ray, contagion of COVID-19 virus in children protection homes which is self-explanatory. The Honble Apex Court had given various directions at point no. 1 to 9 on page 16 to 18 of the order dated the 6th of July 2021 which require immediate action on the part of authorities concerned i.e. child welfare committees, district child protection units, etc. The operative parts of the directions given by the Honble Court are given under for immediate action. 1. To continue identifying the children who have become orphans or lost a parent after March 2020 either due to COVID-19 or otherwise and provide the data to the DCPU concerned for onward uploading of the same on Balswarag portal. 2. Financial assistance to which the disconsolate child is entitled to under the prevailing schemes by the central government and the state government's union territories should be provided without any delay. 3. There should be a regular follow-up with the child at least once in a month. 4. CWC should provide for the essential needs of the child during the pendency of the inquiry without fail. The inquiry should be completed expeditiously. CWC shall ensure that all financial benefits to which the child is entitled are provided without any delay. 5. To make efforts for continuance of education of the children both in government as well as in private schools. 6. To take action against those NGOs, individuals who are indulging in illegal adoptions. 7. White publicity should be given to the provisions of the JJ Act 2015 and the prevailing schemes of the Union of India and the state governments, union territories which would benefit the affected children. Thus, in view of the foregoing, all the child welfare committees are requested to take appropriate action at their end to comply with the directions given by the Honble Court on the 6th of July 2021. Advisory.
whereas Department of Women and Child Development, GNCT of Delhi is the nodal department for implementation of the provisions of Juvenile Justice Care and Corruption of Children Act 2015 and Model Rules 2016 in the NCT of Delhi and to protect the rights of children by providing them care and protection. And whereas as per the provisions of Section 27, 1, Juvenile Justice Care and Corruption of Children Act 2015, the department has established 10 child welfare committees in the NCT of Delhi for exercising the powers and to discharge the duties conferred on such committees in relation to children in need of care and protection under this act. And whereas Section 44, 1, of the Juvenile Justice Care and Corruption of Children Act 2015 prescribes is under. The children in need of care and protection may be placed in foster care, including group foster care for their care and protection through orders of the committee, after following the procedure as may be prescribed in this regard, in a family which does not include the child's biological or adoptive parents or in an unrelated family recognized as suitable for the purpose by the state government for a short or extended period of time. And whereas Rule 23, 1, of the Juvenile Justice Care and Corruption of Children, Model Rules 2016 confers as under. The state government may place children in need of care and protection in foster care including group foster care through order of the committee for a short or extended period of time. And whereas Section 51, 1 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Corruption of Children Act 2015 prescribes is under. The board or the committee shall recognize a facility being run by a governmental organization or a voluntary or non-governmental organization registered under any law for the time being enforced to be fit to temporarily take the responsibility of a child for a specific purpose after due inquiry regarding the suitability of the facility in the organization to take care of the child in such manner as may be prescribed. And whereas Rule 27, 1, of the Juvenile Justice Care and Corruption of Children, Model Rules 2016 confers powers on the Juvenile Justice Board or the Child Welfare Committee is under. The Board or the Committee shall on an application from any institution or organization run by government or non-governmental organization, recognize the facility as a fit facility provided the manager of that facility is willing temporarily to receive a child for a specific purpose or for group foster care. And whereas Rule 27, 10 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Corruption of Children, Model Rules 2016 speaks as under. An institution or organization shall be recognized as a fit facility for purposes which may include I. Short-term care. B. E, medical care treatment and specialized treatment. B. E, psychiatric and mental health care. I. B. De addiction and rehabilitation. B. Education. B. Vocational training and skill development. B. Witness protection. And B. Group foster care. And whereas the juvenile justice boards and the child welfare committees have discretionary powers to recognize fit facility having facilities as mentioned above. Therefore, in view of the aforesaid provisions, the juvenile justice boards or as the case may be, the child welfare committees are requested to take action at their end accordingly to implement the provisions contained under the said act and rules and letter and spirit keeping in view the increased vulnerability of children due to COVID-19 to ensure their well-being. This issues with prior approval of director WCD. Engels, copy of form 18 and 32 of the JJCPC model rules 2016. Advisory. Whereas Department of Women and Child Development, GNCT of Delhi is the nodal department for implementation of the provisions of Juvenile Justice Care and Corruption of Children Act 2015 and Model Rules 2016 in the NCT of Delhi and to protect the rights of children by providing them care and protection. And whereas as per the provisions of Section 27, 1, Juvenile Justice Care and Corruption of Children Act 2015, the department has established 10 child welfare committees in the NCT of Delhi for exercising the powers and to discharge the duties conferred on such committees in relation to children in need of care and protection under this act. And whereas Section 228 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Corruption of Children Act 2015 describes fit person as fit person means any person prepared to own the responsibility of a child for a specific purpose and such person is identified after inquiry made in this behalf and recognized as fit for the said purpose by the committee or, as the case may be, the board to receive and take care of the child. And whereas Section 52, 1 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Corruption of Children Act 2015 prescribes is under the board or the committee shall, after due verification of credentials, recognize any person fit to temporarily receive a child for care, protection and treatment of such child for a specified period and in the manner as may be prescribed. And whereas Rule 28.1 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Corruption of Children, Model Rules 2016 confers as under. Any individual who is fit to temporarily receive a child for care, protection or treatment for a period as may be necessary, may be recognized by the board or the committee as a fit person. And whereas the juvenile justice boards and the child welfare committees have discretionary powers to recognize and declare persons as fit person, willing to temporarily receive a child for care, protection and treatment for the period, as may be necessary on need basis for a child or children after verifying the credentials of such person, and wherever possible, after getting police verification done on such a person. Therefore, in view of the aforesaid provisions, the juvenile justice boards or as the case may be, the child welfare committees are requested to take action at their end accordingly to implement the provisions contained under the said act and rules and letter and spirit keeping in view the increased vulnerability of children due to COVID-19 to ensure their care and protection. This issues with prior approval of Director WCD. Engels, copy of Form 19 and 20 of the JJCPC Model Rules 2016. Whereas on the day of 20, name of the child, son, daughter of, age, residing at, being in care and protection under the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection Act 2015 is ordered by the Child Welfare Committee.
to be kept in the children's home soft fit facility for a period of this is to authorize and require you to receive the said child in your charge and to keep him her in the children's home fit facility soft for the aforesaid order to be carried into execution according to law the concerned official shall upload the details in case of an orphan or abandoned child in the track child relevant web portal given under my hand in the seal of child welfare committee this day of signature chairperson member child welfare committee encl copy of the orders particulars of home and previous record case history and individual care plan as applicable form 19 rule 18 8 order for placement of child under the care of a parent guardian or fit person pending inquiry case no of 20 in ray whereas name of the child has on date been found to be in need of care and protection and is placed under the care and supervision of name address on executing a bond by the said and the committee is satisfied that it is expedient to deal with the said child by making an order placing him her under supervision reason for the child being produced before the cwc it is hereby ordered that the said child be placed under the supervision of name address for a period of this shall be subject to the following conditions that one the child along with the copies of the order and the bond if any executed by the said shall be produced before the committee is and when required by the person executing the bond two the child shall reside at for a period of three the child shall not be allowed to quit the district jurisdiction of without the permission of the committee four the child shall go to school vocational training center regularly the child shall attend name of school vocational training center if already identified at address of school vocational training center five the person under whose care the child is placed shall arrange for the proper care education and welfare of the child six the child shall not be allowed to associate with undesirable characters and shall be prevented from coming in conflict with law seven the child shall be prevented from taking narcotic drugs or psychotropic substances or any other intoxicants eight the directions given by the committee from time to time for the due observance of the conditions mentioned above shall be carried out dated this underscore day of underscore 20 underscore signature chairperson member child welfare committee additional conditions if any may be inserted by the child welfare committee form 20 rule 18 8 and 19 7 undertaking by the parent or guardian or fit person i resident of house no street village town district state do hereby declare that i am willing to take charge of name of the child age under the orders of the child welfare committee subject to the following terms and conditions one if his conduct is unsatisfactory i shall at once inform the committee two i shall do my best for the welfare and education of the said child as long as he remains in my charge and shall make proper provision for his maintenance three in the event of his her illness he shall have proper medical attention in the nearest hospital four i agree to adhere to the conditions that may be imposed by the committee from time to time and also to keep the committee informed about the compliance with the conditions five i undertake to produce him her before the committee is and when required six i shall inform the committee immediately if the child goes out of my charge or control date this day of signature signed before child welfare committee form 32 rule 2315 order of foster care placement with a family or group foster care the child name and address approximate hd ors oh mr and mrs is in need of care and protection of a family mr and mrs resident of complete address and contact numbers are declared fit for foster care placement of the child after considering the individual care plan child study report and home study report or child care institution name and address is declared fit for foster care placement of the child after considering the individual care plan and child study report the child name is placed in foster care for a period of under the supervision of the aforesaid child welfare officer social worker name and contact chairperson member child welfare committee government of nct of delhi department of women and child development child protection unit fifth floor isbt building kashmir gate delhi 110006 f 61 15 29 w pc 3031 2020 it's dd cpu dwcd 2021 minus 22 dated sub collection of information with regard to orphan minor children who have lost one or both of the parents in the nct of delhi reg ref pondal delhi high court order dated the 6th of march 2021 in the matter wp c 3031 2020 it's in connected matters as you would be already aware, the Honble High Court of Delhi while hearing the matter W. PC 3031-2020 its and connected matters on the 6th of March 2021 was pleased to pass following directions at para 26 of the said order. We also direct the GNCTD to utilize its large workforce of Anganwadi workers, who are stated to be 10,775 in number, to collect information with regard to the orphaned minor children who have lost one or both of the parents in the NCT of Delhi, and to provide the information to the concerned CWC. Once the information is gathered with regard to the orphan children, the CWC concerned should take all measures as required by them under the Juvenile Justice Act without waiting for any further directions from the court.
Thus, in order to comply with the directions as mentioned above passed by the Honble Court, it is requested to issue necessary directions to the Child Development Project Officers, CDPOs being the controlling point of Anganwadi Centers in the NCT of Delhi to supply information with regard to orphaned minor children who have lost one or both of the parents in the NCT of Delhi to the District Child Protection Officers, DCPUs, for onward submission to the Child Welfare Committee concerned. The names, contact number of DCPOs along with their email ID is given as under. S. No. Name of the District Child Protection Officer. Contact no. District. Email id. 1. Ms. Ritu Sharma. 8,744,855,034. Central. DC Pacentral Delhi at Gmail. Com. 2. Ms. Basuda Singh. 9,718,817,348. Northeast. DC Pun Northeast at Gmail. Com. 3. Mr. Baranidog. 9,650,885,307. South Delhi. DCPU South Delhi at Gmail. Com. 4. Ms. Sarita. 8,130,601,924. West. DC West 4 at Gmail. Com. 5. Mr. Sudish Maher. 9,718,417,666. Northwest. DC Pa Northwest 2 at Gmail. Com. 6. Mr. Arunendra Narayan. 9,899,012,315. North, DC Pool I4 at Gmail. Com. 7. Ms. Basuda Singh, additional charge. 9,718,817,348. East, DC Puistic at Gmail. Com. 8. Ms. Anita Singh. 9,650,448,603. Southeast, DC Pa Southeast 2 at Gmail. Com. 9. Ms. Sarita, additional charge. 8,130,601,924. Southwest, DC Pasquid 9 at Gmail. Com. 10. Mr. Shyam Singh. 7,053,958,728. New Delhi. DC Poonoodle Heek at Gmail. Com. This issues with prior approval of the director, WCD. The information must be shared with the DCPOs on date and day basis with the Honorable Court. Thank you. 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 Whereas Department of Women and Child Development, GNCT of Delhi, is the nodal department to take up matters relating to children with a view to ensure the implementation of the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015 and Model Rules 2016 in the NCT of Delhi, including the establishment and maintenance of institutions under this Act, notification of competent authorities in relation to the children and their rehabilitation and coordination with various official and non-official agencies concerned. And whereas, as per the provisions of Section 27, 1, Juvenile Justice, Care and Protection of Children, Act 2015, the Department has established 10 Child Welfare Committees in the NCT of Delhi for exercising the powers and to discharge the duties conferred on such committees in relation to children in need of care and protection under the said Act. And whereas, Section 44, 1, of the Juvenile Justice, Care and Protection of Children, Act 2015 enumerates that the children in need of care and protection may be placed in foster care, including group foster care for their care and protection through orders of the committee, after following the procedure as may be prescribed. In this regard, in a family which does not include the child's biological or adoptive parents or in an unrelated family recognized as suitable for the purpose by the state government for a short or extended period of time. And whereas Section 51, 1 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015 prescribes that the board or the committee shall recognize a facility being run by a governmental organization or a voluntary or non-governmental organization registered under any law for the time being enforced to be fit to temporarily take the responsibility of a child for a specific purpose after due inquiry regarding the suitability of the facility and the organization to take care of the child in such manner as may be prescribed. And whereas Rule 27, 1 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children, Model Rules 2016 confers powers on the Juvenile Justice Board or the Child Welfare Committee stating that the board or the committee shall on an application from any institution or organization run by government or non-governmental organization recognize the facility as a fit facility provided the manager of that facility is willing temporarily to receive a child for a specific purpose or for group foster care. And whereas Rule 23.3 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Model Rules 2016 states that all decisions related to placement of a child in foster care shall be taken by the committee. Now therefore, in view of the aforesaid provisions and rules prescribed under the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015 and Model Rules 2016, the following guidelines are issued with intent to effectively implement the foster care services as non-institutional alternative care for the children deprived of. Family care are where parents of the children have been found unfit or incapacitated by the committee to care for and protect the safety and well-being of the child. 1. Procedures in relation to Child Welfare Committee. The child shall be received by the Child Welfare Committee with a report in Form 17 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children, Model Rules 2016, here and after called Model Rules containing the particulars of the child as well as the circumstances in which the child was received or found. The committee or the member on duty shall order immediate medical examination of the child produced before the committee or the member on duty, if such examination is needed. 
The committee shall interact with the child and may issue directions for placing the child with the parent or guardian or children's home where order for placement of a child in a child care institution shall be made in Form 18 of the model rules. The committee shall inquire into the circumstances under which the child is produced and accordingly declare such child to be a child in need of care and protection under subsection 1 of section 37 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015, here and after called Act. The committee shall prima facie determine the age of the child following the procedures prescribed under section 94 of the Act. The committee shall issue order in Form 21 of the Model Rules for Conducting Social Investigation which shall be completed within 15 days so as to enable the committee to pass final order within four months of first production of the child. The committee, after taking into account the risk factors and in the best interest of the child, may direct the publication of the particulars and photograph of an orphan or abandoned child in national newspapers with wide circulation within 72 hours from the time of receiving the child for the purposes of tracing out. The biological parents are the legal guardians. The committee shall direct the person or organization concerned to develop an individual care plan in Form 7 of the model rules including a suitable rehabilitation plan. The individual care plan prepared for every child in the institutional care shall be developed with the ultimate aim of the child being rehabilitated and re- Integrated based on the case history, circumstances, and individual needs of the child. The individual care plan shall be monitored by means of a rehabilitation card in Form 14 of the model rules issued for the purpose by the committee passing the final order. In case of orphan and abandoned child, the committee shall make all efforts for tracing the parents or guardians of the child and on completion of such inquiry, if it is established that the child is either an orphan having no one to take care or abandoned, the committee shall declare the child legally free for adoption. Provided that such declaration shall be made within a period of two months from the date of production of the child for children who are up to two years of age and within four months for children above two years of age. Where the parents of the child are traced, the procedure for restoration of the child shall be followed as per Rule 82 of the model rules to release and restore after hearing the child and his parents are guardian and after satisfying itself as to the identity of the persons claiming to be the parents are the guardian. In case of surrendered child, the institution where the child has been placed by the committee on an application for surrender or upon execution of the surrender deed shall bring the case before the committee immediately on completion of the reconsideration period of two months allowed to the person who has surrendered the child for declaring the child legally free for adoption. The committee by following the procedure under the said act may declare a child of a mentally retarded parents or an unwanted child a victim of sexual assault free for adoption and subsequently pass an order for placement in group foster care. The decision to declare an orphan, abandoned or surrendered child as legally free for adoption shall be taken by opinion of the majority i.e. at least three members of the committee and where there is no such majority, the opinion of the chairperson shall prevail. After the completion of the inquiry, if committee is of the opinion that the said child has no family or ostensible support or is in continued need of care and protection, it may pass an order for placement of the child preferably with the fit facility for group foster care till suitable means of rehabilitation are found for the child. Or till the child attains the age child is legally free for adoption shall be taken by opinion of the majority i.e. at least three members of the committee and where there is no such majority, the opinion of the chairperson shall prevail. After the completion of the inquiry, if committee is of the opinion that the said child has no family or ostensible support or is in continued need of care and protection, it may pass an order for placement of the child preferably with the fit facility for group foster care till suitable means of rehabilitation are found for the child or till the child attains the age of 18 years. The committee shall make all efforts to keep the siblings together while making placement under group foster care unless it is in their best interest not to be kept together. The committee shall pass directions to facilities i.e. group foster care in whose care the child is placed regarding care, protection and rehabilitation of the child, including directions relating to immediate shelter and services such as medical attention, psychiatric and psychological support including need-based counseling. Occupational therapy or behavior modification therapy, skill training, legal aid, educational services, and other developmental activities as required, as well as follow-up and coordination with the District Child Protection Unit or state government and other agencies. Children in need of care and protection who are living in community may also be considered for placement in foster care based on the child study report in Form 31 of the model rules prepared by the District Child Protection Unit. The committee shall take into consideration the individual care plan and the opinion of the child before deciding the nature of foster care with due regard to his age and maturity. The child shall be informed and prepared throughout the process. Group foster care may be for short-term or long-term depending upon the needs of the child where the duration of short-term foster care shall be for a period of not more than one year. Long-term foster care shall be for a period exceeding one year. This can be periodically extended by the committee till the child attains 18 years of age on the basis of assessment of the compatibility of the child in a group foster care setting. Recognizing that every child has the right to grow in a family environment, as far as possible, every attempt shall be made to reunite the child with his biological family or placement in adoption. Children with special needs may be considered for placement in group foster care, provided group setting has facilities for care of such children. The number of children placed under group foster care shall not exceed eight children in one unit including biological children of the foster caregiver. The committee shall pass the final order in Form 32 of the model rules for placing the child in group foster care, specifying the period for which the child is placed in foster care. All decisions related to placement of a child in foster care shall be taken by the committee. Children in the age group of six years and above may be considered for placement in foster care and children below six years of age shall be, as far as possible, placed in adoption.
the committee shall conduct monthly inspection of the foster families or foster caregivers in Form 35 of the model rules to check the well-being of the child. 2. The roles and responsibilities of the group foster caregiver. The group foster caregiver shall sign an undertaking for foster care of the child in Form 33 of the model rules and shall meet the basic standards of care and protection to the child, provide basic services to any child placed with it, prevent child placed with it to any form of cruelty or exploitation or neglect, provide adequate food, clothing and shelter and education, provide care, support and treatment for child's overall physical, emotional and mental health, ensure protection from exploitation, maltreatment, harm, neglect and abuse. Provide age-appropriate facilities for recreation, extracurricular activities such as sports, music, dance, drama, art, etc. Provide vocational training according to the interests of the child. Respect the privacy of the child and his biological family or guardian, and acknowledge that any information provided about them is confidential and is not to be disclosed to another party without prior consent. Provide treatment in emergent situations and inform the committee and biological family about the same which may pass appropriate orders wherever necessary. Support contact between the child and his biological family in consultation with the committee keeping in view the best interest of the child. Share and discuss the information pertaining to the progress of the child periodically with the committee and biological family of the child and produce the child before the committee is and when directed by the committee. And ensure that the child's whereabouts are known at all times, including reporting any changes of address, holiday plans and any episodes of running away of the child to the committee. And abide by the orders passed by the committee. 3. Categories of children who may be considered for foster care. 1. Children who are not being adopted after being declared legally free for adoption may be eligible for foster care. 2. If adoptable children between the age of 6 to 8 years do not get a family either in in-country adoption or in inter-country adoption within a period of 2 years after they are declared legally free for adoption by Child Welfare Committee, such children to be eligible to be placed in group foster care by the committee on the recommendation of District Child Protection Unit or Specialized Adoption Agency. 3. Children in the age group of 8 to 18 years who are legally free for adoption but have not been selected by any prospective adoptive parent path for one year to be eligible to be placed in group foster care by the committee on the recommendation of District Child Protection Unit or Specialized Adoption Agency. 4. Children with special needs, irrespective of the age, who do not get a family either in in-country adoption or in inter-country adoption within a period of one year after they are declared legally free for adoption by Child Welfare Committee, such children to be eligible to be placed in group foster care by the committee on the recommendation of District Child Protection Unit or Specialized Adoption Agency provided the home study report of the foster family supports their fitness and group setting has facilities for care of such children. 4. Procedure for recognition of a fit facility for group foster care. 1. An institution or organization prepared to temporarily own the responsibility of a particular child for foster care may apply in Form 38 of the model rules for recognition of group foster care through District Child Protection Unit of the district concerned. 2. Application shall be accompanied with a copy each of rules, bylaws, memorandum of association, list of governing body, office bearers, list of trustees, balance sheet of the preceding three years, statement of past record of social or public service provided by the institution or organization. 3. The committee shall on an application from any institution or organization run by government or non-governmental organization after proper inspection and inquiry may recognize the facility as a fit facility for group foster care in Form 39 of the model rules provided. A. The management or caregiver of that facility is willing temporarily to receive a child for foster care and... B. Provisions exist in the institution for the care and protection of children with reference to their health, education, boarding and lodging facilities, vocational facilities and rehabilitation as per the rules that any person associated with such institution or organization should not have been convicted of an offense or have been involved in any immoral act or an act of child abuse or employment of child labor or in an offense involving moral turpitude. 4. A decision on the application for recognition of an institution or organization shall be taken by the committee within a period of 15 days from the date of receipt of the application. 5. The recognition to an institution or an organization as a fit facility for group foster care shall be initially for a period of three years which may be renewed for a further period of three years in accordance with sub-rule 4 of this rule. 6. A list of fit facilities for group foster care recognized by the committee shall be kept in that office and be sent to the District Child Protection Unit and the State Child Protection Society. 5. Withdrawal of recognition of fit facility for group foster care. 1. The committee may, if dissatisfied with the standard of care and protection provided, or conditions prevailing in the facility, or the management of the institution or the organization recognized under the Act or on an adverse report made by an inspection committee appointed under Section 54 of the Act, or for any other reason, at any time, by a reasoned order, withdraw the recognition of the institution or the organization as a fit facility and from the date specified in the order of the committee, the institution or the organization shall cease to be a fit facility recognized under the Act and the model rules. 2. Where the recognition of a fit facility for group foster care is withdrawn by the committee, intimation of the same shall be sent to the District Child Protection Unit and the children placed with such an institution or organization may be placed by the committee to another similar fit facility or any other child care institution. 6. Alternative care and fit facilities for specific purpose. 
besides fit facility for group foster care, an institution or organization willing and prepared to own the responsibilities to temporarily receive a child may also be recognized as a fit facility by the Juvenile Justice Board or the Child Welfare Committee as the case may be for specific purposes which may include short-term care, medical care treatment and specialized treatment, psychiatric and mental health care, the addiction and rehabilitation, education, vocational training and skill development, and witness protection. The services to be provided by the fit facility for specific purposes may include food, clothing, water, sanitation and hygiene, mental health interventions including counseling, medical facilities including first aid and to facilitate specialized treatment, formal age appropriate education including bridge education and continuing education and life skill education, and recreation, sports, fine arts and group work activities. 1. Roles and responsibilities of District Child Protection Unit. The District Child Protection Unit shall be the nodal authority for implementing the foster care program in a district. The District Child Protection Unit, while selecting group foster care setting, shall consider the following illustrative criteria. I. Recognition as a fit facility by committee. E. Existence of child protection policy. And E. Sufficient space and proper amenities for children. The District Child Protection Unit shall maintain a record of each child in foster care in Form 34 of the model rules. Guidelines on fit person and foster parent. Whereas Department of Women and Child Development, GNCT of Delhi is the nodal department for implementation of the provisions of Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015 and Model Rules 2016 in the NCT of Delhi and to protect the rights of children by providing them care and protection. And whereas as per the provisions of Section 27, 1, Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015, the department has established 10 child welfare committees in the NCT of Delhi for exercising the powers and to discharge the duties conferred on such committees in relation to children in need of care and protection under this act. And whereas Section 228 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015 describes fit person as fit person means any person prepared to own the responsibility of a child for a specific purpose and such person is identified after inquiry made in this behalf and recognized as fit for the said purpose by the committee or, as the case may be, the board to receive and take care of the child. And whereas Section 52 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015 prescribes is under the board or the committee shall, after due verification of credentials, recognize any person fit to temporarily receive a child for care, protection and treatment of such child for a specified period and in the manner as may be prescribed. And whereas Rule 28.1 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children, Model Rules 2016 confers is under. Any individual who is fit to temporarily receive a child for care, protection or treatment for a period as may be necessary, may be recognized by the board or the committee as a fit person. And whereas the juvenile justice boards and the child welfare committees have discretionary powers to recognize and declare persons as fit person, willing to temporarily receive a child for care, protection and treatment for the period, as may be necessary on need basis for a child or children after verifying the credentials of such person, and wherever possible, after getting police verification done on such a person. Now therefore, in view of the aforesaid provisions and rules prescribed under the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015 and Model Rules 2016, the following guidelines are issued with intent to effectively implement the foster care services as non-institutional alternative care for the children deprived of. Family care are where parents of the children have been found unfit or incapacitated by the committee to care for and protect the safety and well-being of the child. 1. Procedures in relation to Child Welfare Committee. A child shall be received by the Child Welfare Committee with a report in Form 17 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children, Model Rules 2016, here and after called Model Rules containing the particulars of the child as well as the circumstances in which the child was received or found. The committee or the member on duty shall order immediate medical examination of the child produced before the committee or the member on duty, if such examination is needed. The committee shall interact with the child and may issue directions for placing the child with the parent or guardian or children's home where order for placement of a child in a child care institution shall be made in Form 18 of the Model Rules. The committee shall inquire into the circumstances under which the child is produced and accordingly declare such child to be a child in need of care and protection under subsection 1 of section 37 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015, here and after called Act. The committee shall prima facie determine the age of the child following the procedures prescribed under section 94 of the Act. The committee shall issue order in Form 21 of the Model Rules for conducting social investigation which shall be completed within 15 days so as to enable the committee to pass final order within four months of first production of the child. The committee, after taking into account the risk factors and in the best interest of the child, may direct the publication of the particulars and photograph of an orphan or abandoned child in national newspapers with wide circulation within 72 hours from the time of receiving the child for the purposes of tracing out. The biological parents are the legal guardians. The committee shall direct the person or organization concerned to develop an individual care plan in Form 7 of the model rules including a suitable rehabilitation plan. The individual care plan prepared for every child in the institutional care shall be developed with the ultimate aim of the child being rehabilitated and re- integrated based on the case history, circumstances and individual needs of the child. The individual care plan shall be monitored by means of a rehabilitation card in Form 14 of the model rules issued for the purpose by the committee passing the final order. 
In case of orphan and abandoned child, the committee shall make all efforts for tracing the parents or guardians of the child and on completion of such inquiry, if it is established that the child is either an orphan having no one to take care or abandoned, the committee shall declare the child legally free for adoption. Provided that such declaration shall be made within a period of two months from the date of production of the child for children who are up to two years of age and within four months for children above two years of age. Where the parents of the child are traced, the procedure for restoration of the child shall be followed as per Rule 82 of the model rules to release and restore after hearing the child and his parents are guardian, and after satisfying itself as to the identity of the persons claiming to be the parents are the guardian. In case of surrendered child, the institution where the child has been placed by the committee on an application for surrender or upon execution of the surrender deed shall bring the case before the committee immediately on completion of the reconsideration period of two months allowed to the person who has surrendered the child for declaring the child legally free for adoption. The committee by following the procedure under the said act may declare a child of a mentally retarded parents or unwanted child a victim of sexual assault free for adoption and subsequently pass an order for placement in foster family. The decision to declare an orphan, abandoned or surrendered child as legally free for adoption shall be taken by opinion of the majority i.e. at least three members of the committee and where there is no such majority, the opinion of the chairperson shall prevail. After the completion of the inquiry, if committee is of the opinion that the said child has no family or ostensible support or is in continued need of care and protection, it may pass an order for placement of the child preferably with the fit person in foster family till suitable means of rehabilitation are found for the child or till the child attains the age of 18 years. The committee shall make all efforts to keep the siblings together while making placement under group foster care unless it is in their best interest not to be kept together. The committee shall pass directions to fit person or foster family in whose care the child is placed regarding care, protection and rehabilitation of the child, including directions relating to immediate shelter and services such as medical attention, psychiatric and psychological support including need-based counseling. Occupational therapy or behavior modification therapy, skill training, legal aid, educational services, and other developmental activities, as required, as well as follow-up and coordination with the district child protection unit or state government and other agencies. Children in need of care and protection who are living in community may also be considered for placement in foster care based on the child study report in Form 31 of the model rules prepared by the district child protection unit. The committee shall take into consideration the individual care plan and the opinion of the child before deciding the nature of foster care with due regard to his age and maturity. The child shall be informed and prepared throughout the process. Recognizing that every child has the right to grow in a family environment, as far as possible, every attempt shall be made to reunite the child with his biological family or placement in adoption. Children with special needs may be considered for placement in foster family, provided group setting has facilities for care of such children. The number of children placed with foster family shall not exceed eight children in one unit, including biological children of the foster parents. The committee shall pass the final order in Form 32 of the model rules for placing the child with foster family, specifying the period for which the child is placed in foster care. All decisions related to placement of a child in foster care shall be taken by the committee. Children in the age group of six years and above may be considered for placement in foster care and children below six years of age shall be, as far as possible, placed in adoption. The committee shall conduct monthly inspection of the foster families or foster caregivers in Form 35 of the model rules to check the well-being of the child. 2. The roles and responsibilities of the foster family. 1. The foster family shall sign an undertaking for foster care of the child in Form 33 of the model rules and shall 2. Meet the basic standards of care and protection to the child. 3. Provide basic services to any child placed with it. 4. Prevent child placed with it to any form of cruelty or exploitation or neglect. 5. Provide adequate food, clothing and shelter and education. 6. Provide care, support and treatment for child's overall physical, emotional and mental health. Ensure protection from exploitation, maltreatment, harm, neglect and abuse. 7. Provide age-appropriate facilities for recreation, extracurricular activities such as sports, music, dance, drama, art, etc. 8. Provide vocational training according to the interests of the child. 9. Respect the privacy of the child and his biological family or guardian, and acknowledge that any information provided about them is confidential and is not to be disclosed to another party without prior consent. 10. Provide treatment in emergent situations and inform the committee and biological family about the same which may pass appropriate orders wherever necessary. 11. Support contact between the child and his biological family in consultation with the committee keeping in view the best interest of the child. 12. Share and discuss the information pertaining to the progress of the child periodically with the committee and biological family of the child and produce the child before the committee is and when directed by the committee. And 13. Ensure that the child's whereabouts are known at all times, including reporting any changes of address, holiday plans and any episodes of running away of the child to the committee. And 14. Abide by the orders passed by the committee. 3. Categories of children who may be considered for foster care. 1. Children who are not being adopted after being declared legally free for adoption may be eligible for foster care. 2. If adoptable children between the age of 6 to 8 years do not get a family either in in-country adoption or in inter-country adoption within a period of 2 years after they are declared legally free for adoption by Child Welfare Committee, such children to be eligible to be placed in group foster care by the committee on the recommendation of District Child Protection Unit or Specialized Adoption Agency. 3. 
Children in the age group of 8 to 18 years, who are legally free for adoption but have not been selected by any prospective adoptive parent path for one year to be eligible to be placed in group foster care by the committee on the recommendation of District Child Protection Unit or Specialized Adoption Agency. 4. Children with special needs, irrespective of the age, who do not get a family either in in-country adoption or in inter-country adoption within a period of one year after they are declared legally free for adoption by Child Welfare Committee, such children to be eligible to be placed in group foster care be the committee on. The recommendation of District Child Protection Unit or Specialized Adoption Agency provided the home study report of the foster family supports their fitness and group setting has facilities for care of such children. 4. Procedure for recognition of a fit person and foster family. 1. Any individual who is fit to temporarily receive a child for care, protection or treatment for a period as may be necessary may be recognized by the Juvenile Justice Board or the Child Welfare Committee as a fit person and foster family. 2. The board or the committee may identify a panel of persons on the basis of their credentials, respectability, expertise, professional qualifications, experience of dealing with children and their willingness to receive the child and shall recognize them as fit persons and foster parents for the purposes of the act. Provided that such a person should not have been accused of an offense under the act or have been involved in any immoral act or in act of child abuse or employment of child labor or in an offense involving moral turpitude. 3. The board or the committee may also appoint any person as a fit person and foster parents on need basis for a child or children after verifying the credentials of such person and wherever possible after getting police verification done on such a person. 4. A list of fit persons and foster parents recognized by the board or the committee shall be kept in the office of the board and the committee in the children's court and be sent to the special juvenile police unit, the district child protection unit and the state child protection society. 5. The board or the committee or the children's court may place the child with a fit person and foster family in cases wherever required, including where the child cannot be sent to a child care institution due to distance and or odd time. 6. The fit person and foster family shall I have the capacity and willingness to receive the child and he provide basic services for care and protection of the child. 7. The board or the committee or the children's court depending on the need of the child and in consultation with the fit person and foster parents shall determine the period for which a child shall remain with the fit person. 8. The child shall not be placed with a fit person not recognized as foster parent for a period exceeding 30 days and in such cases where the child requires further care, the committee may consider the placement of the child with foster family or may consider other rehabilitative alternatives for the child. 9. The board or the children's court in such cases where the period of placement of the child may exceed 30 days, refer the matter to the committee for further orders in respect of the child for placement in foster family. 10. Placement in foster family may be for short-term or long-term depending upon the needs of the child where the duration of short-term foster care shall be for a period of not more than one year. 11. Long-term foster care shall be for a period exceeding one year. This can be periodically extended by the committee till the child attains 18 years of age on the basis of assessment of the compatibility of the child in a group foster care setting. 5. Withdrawal of recognition of fit person for foster parent. 1. The board or the committee may, if dissatisfied with the standard of care and protection provided or for any other reason, at any time, by a reasoned order withdraw the recognition of the person as a fit person for foster parent from the date specified in the order of the board or the committee. 2. Where the recognition of a fit person and foster parent is withdrawn by the board or the committee, intimation of the same shall be sent to the Children's Court Special Juvenile Police Unit and District Child Protection Unit and the child placed with such a fit person and foster parent may be placed by the board or the committee or the children's court to another fit person and foster parent or with a fit facility or any child care institution. 2. Roles and responsibilities of district child protection unit. 1. The district child protection unit shall be the nodal authority for implementing the foster care program in a district. 2. The district child protection unit while selecting foster family shall consider the following, namely. I. Both the spouses must be Indian citizens. B. E, both the spouses must be willing to foster the same child. B. E, both the spouses must be above the age of 35 years and must be in good physical, emotional and mental health. IV, ordinarily the foster family should have an income with which they are able to meet the needs of the child. B, medical reports of all the members of the foster family residing in the premises should be obtained including reports for human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, tuberculosis, TB, and hepatitis B, etc. to determine that they are medically fit. And B, the foster family should have adequate space and basic facilities. 3. The district child protection unit shall maintain a record of each child in foster care in Form 34 of the model rules. Form 18. Rules 18, 5, 18, 9, and 19, 26. Order of placement of a child in an institution. Children's home, fit facility, saw. Case no. 2. The officer in charge. Whereas on the day of 20. Name of the child. Son, daughter of. Age. Residing at. Being in care and protection under the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection Act 2015 is ordered by the Child Welfare Committee. To be kept in the children's home, saw, fit facility. For a period of. This is to authorize and require you to receive the said child in your charge and to keep him, her in the children's home, fit facility, saw for the aforesaid order to be carried into execution according to law. The concerned official shall upload the details in case of an orphan or abandoned child in the track child relevant web portal given under my hand in the seal of Child Welfare Committee. This day of signature, chairperson, member, Child Welfare Committee, ENCL.
Copy of the orders, particulars of home and previous record, case history and individual care plan as applicable. Form 19, Rule 18, 8. Order for placement of child under the care of a parent, guardian, OR, fit person pending inquiry. Case no, of 20, in Ray, whereas name of the child has on. Date been found to be in need of care and protection and is placed under the care and supervision of name. Address, on executing a bond by the said, and the committee is satisfied that it is expedient to deal with the said child by making an order placing him her under supervision. Reason for the child being produced before the CWC. It is hereby ordered that the said child be placed under the supervision of name. Address for a period of. This shall be subject to the following conditions that. 1. The child along with the copies of the order and the bond, if any, executed by the said. Shall be produced before the committee as and when required by the person executing the bond. 2. The child shall reside at. For a period of. 3. The child shall not be allowed to quit the district jurisdiction of. Without the permission of the committee. 4. The child shall go to school, vocational training center regularly. The child shall attend. Name of school, vocational training center, if already identified, at. Address of school, vocational training center. 5. The person under whose care the child is placed shall arrange for the proper care, education, and welfare of the child. 6. The child shall not be allowed to associate with undesirable characters and shall be prevented from coming in conflict with law. 7. The child shall be prevented from taking narcotic drugs or psychotropic substances or any other intoxicants. 8. The directions given by the committee from time to time for the due observance of the conditions mentioned above shall be carried out. Dated this underscore, day of underscore, 20 underscore. Signature, chairperson, member, child welfare committee. Additional conditions, if any may be inserted by the child welfare committee. Form 20, rule 18, 8 and 19, 7. Undertaking by the parent OR guardian OR, fit person. I, resident of house no, street, village, town, district, state. Do hereby declare that I am willing to take charge of name of the child. Age. Under the orders of the Child Welfare Committee, subject to the following terms and conditions. 1. If his conduct is unsatisfactory, I shall at once inform the committee. 2. I shall do my best for the welfare and education of the said child as long as he remains in my charge and shall make proper provision for his maintenance. 3. In the event of his her illness, he shall have proper medical attention in the nearest hospital. 4. I agree to adhere to the conditions that may be imposed by the committee from time to time and also to keep the committee informed about the compliance with the conditions. 5. I undertake to produce him, her before the committee is and when required. 6. I shall inform the committee immediately if the child goes out of my charge or control. Date this day of. Signature. Signed before Child Welfare Committee. Form 31. Rule 23-4. Child Study Report. Child Study Report. S. No. Item. Response. 1. Date of assessment. 2. Source of referral. 3. Photograph of the child to be refreshed periodically. Profile of the child. 4. Name of the child. 5. Date of birth. 6. Place of birth. 7. Age. 8. Nationality. 9. Religion. 10. Education. 11. Mother tongue. 12. Present address. 13. Audar card number. 14. Contact details. A landline. B. Mobile. 15. Placement history of the child is from institution. A date of placement. B. Name and permanent details of the child. C. Reason for leaving the family. The child has not been placed in adoption. 16. Reason for placement if the child is from community. Mother or both parents in prison. Parents are suffering from long-term illness, dysfunctional family, e.g. substance abuse, domestic violence, etc. Parents in process of separation. Parents in process of legal custody dispute. Natural disaster. Others. I, social worker, hereby certify that the information given in this form about child is correct. Signature. Place. Name. Date. Designation. Form 32. Rule 2315. Order of foster care placement with a family. OR. Group foster care. The child's name and address, approximate age D, O or S, O Mr. and Mrs. Is in need of care and protection of a family. Mr. and Mrs. resident of complete address and contact numbers are declared. Fit for foster care placement of the child after considering the individual care plan, child study report and home study report. OR. Child care institution, name and address, is declared fit for foster care placement of the child after considering the individual care plan and child study report. The child's name is placed in foster care for a period of under the supervision of the aforesaid child welfare officer, social worker, name and contact. Chairperson, member, child welfare committee, form 33, rule 23, 16, undertaking by the foster family, group foster care organization. I, we, residents of house, no, street, village, town, district, state, caregiver associated with foster care home run by organization at address do hereby declare that I, we am, are willing to take charge of name of the child. Aged under the orders of the child welfare committee, subject to the following terms and conditions. I. If the conduct of the child is unsatisfactory, I. We shall at once inform the committee. E. I. We shall do my, our best for the welfare and education of the said child as long as he remains in my charge and shall make proper provision for his maintenance. E. In the event of his illness, he shall have proper medical attention in the nearest hospital and a report of it followed by a fitness certificate shall be submitted before the committee. 
IV. I, we shall inform the committee about any change of address. V. I, we shall do my best to ensure that the child will not be subjected to any form of abuse. V. I, we agree to adhere to the conditions laid by the committee. V. I, we undertake to produce him before the committee is and when required. V. I, we undertake to inform the committee immediately if the child goes out of my charge or control. Date this day of signature and address of two witnesses signature of applicants. Signed before me, chairperson, member, child welfare committee. Form 34, rule 23, 17. Record of a child in foster care. A case no. B. Name of the child. C. Age. D. Gender. E. Name and address of the child care institution, if any from where the child has been given for foster care. F. Individual care plan. G. Any other source of referral. H. Details of the child placed in foster care including photograph of the child, foster caregiver, parent, biological parents, if available. I. Details of the placement, individual or group including date and period of placement. J. Home study report of the biological family, where applicable with photograph. K. Home study report of the foster family individual or group care, with photograph. L. Child study report. M. Address of the child welfare committee. N. Particulars of the order of the committee placing the child in foster care. O. Record, number and significant details of each visit with the child, foster family, biological family, if available in child school. P. Record of all reviews of the placement including observations, extent and quality of compliance with care plan, child's developmental milestones, child's academic progress, and any changes in family environment. Q. In the case of extension or termination of the placement, record of date and reason for termination. R. Date of the child being handed over to the foster family. S. Financial assistance provided, if any. T. Name of the case worker appointed. Application seeking recognition as fit person, foster parent. 1. Name. 2. Age. Attach proof. 3. Sex. 4. Address. 5. Contact no. 6. Odd R no. Attach copy. 6. Educational status. 7. Occupation, employment details. Attach copy of iCard. 8. Financial stability. Attach copy of ITR or salary slip. 9. Family details. S. No. Name and relationship. Age. Sex. Education. Occupation. Income. Health status. 10. Present living conditions. 11. Declaration. I. I have the capacity and willingness to receive the child. E. I shall provide basic services for care and protection of the child in. E. I shall ensure safety and well-being of the child. I. B. I shall ensure to provide enabling family environment. B. Neither I or any other member of the family has been convicted by any court of law for offense against a child or for any moral turpitude. Date. Place. Signature of applicant. Order. The Honorable Supreme Court of India beat order dated the 6th of July 2021 in the matter SMWPC. No. 4 of 2020 in Ray, contagion of COVID-19 virus in Children Protection Homes Directed States, UTs to nominate nodal officers who shall be contacted by LD. Amicus Curiae to obtain the information relating to the welfare of the children who are in dolor estate due to loss of their parent parents. Thus, in compliance of the above directions given by the Honorable Apex Court, the Department of Women and Child Development, Government of NCT of Delhi hereby nominates Joint Director, Child Protection Unit, Deft. Of WCD, GNCTD is nodal officer for the aforesaid purpose. The details of nodal officer are given as under name, designation, contact no, email ID, sub, uploading of data related to children who have lost their parent, parents on Balswarat portal reg. This is in reference to the aforementioned subject. In this context, it is to inform that as per the directions given by the Honorable Supreme Court of India in the matter SMWPC, no. 4 of 2020 in Ray, contagion of COVID-19 virus in children protection homes, the District Child Protection Officers, DCPO's Department of Women and Child Development, GNCT of Delhi, are uploading the data as received to them in respect of children having lost their one or both parents in the NCT of Delhi on day-to-day -day basis on the Balswarat portal of NCPCR. In this connection, it is to also a prize that is evident from the Honorable Court directions contained in the order dated the 6th of January 2021 on page no. 7. DLD. Council appearing for NCPCR has submitted that the basic information required according to stage 1 and 2 is sufficient. It is to further state that, as reported by the District Child Protection Officers, they are facing difficulties in uploading data on Bal Swaraj portal as information beyond stage 1 and 2 is also required to be filled online. It is also added that, as per recent information received from the DCPOs, after facing above difficulties they have also contacted the IT official in NCPCR but their issues remain unsolved and the online portal has also stopped working from yesterday. Thus, it is requested to look into the issues flagged above and kindly guide us how to proceed further in the matter so that the data related to children having lost their parent, parents in the NCT of Delhi could be smoothly uploaded on the portal meant for the said purpose on day-to-day -day basis. This issues with prior approval of the director, WCD. Sub, regarding reimbursing the amount in the matter W. PC 1741-2021 titled Deepak vs. Govit of NCT of Delhi and Ors Pendic before the Honorable High Court of Delhi. NDOH the 27th of July 2021. 
I am directed to inform that the department had duly considered the proposal for reimbursement of money already spent by the petitioner up till the time of filing of writ petition towards his education and accordingly, the same was apprised to the Honorable High Court of Delhi its counter affidavit filed by the department. On the 4th of August 2021, the same is on record in Honorable Court order dated the 20th of April 2021. In continuation to thereof, the department has reimbursed credited an amount of ours. 135,115, dated the 7th of December 2021 in favor of the petitioner's account feed check bearing no. 718,027, copy of the NAFT and bank statement are enclosed herewith for ready reference. Hence, it is requested to apprise place the same before the Honorable Court accordingly. Sub payment of professional charges to Mr. Mrs. Permega Second Sashadri Shikar Ray, Sanjeev Das and Rashmi Malhotra Reg. This is in reference to letter F. 127, low, 2017, Dice O'Clock, 103, dated the 2nd of January 2021, F. 127, low, 2017, Dice O'Clock, 2726, dated the 18th of March 2021, and F. 127, low, 2017, Dice O'Clock, 2733, dated the 18th of March 2021, regarding verification of appearance and professional charges of councils. In this context, as per available records in this department, as well as based on the order of judgment in the matter, the following relevant details are submitted. S. No. Case no. Titled. Date of hearing. Remarks. Status of court matters. S. No. Details of court case. Actionable points based on last order. Action taken. Compliance made. 1. Honble Supreme Court matter SMWPC 4 of 2020 and Ray Contagion of COVID-19 Virus in Children Protection Homes. NDOH. 2021. The district magistrates to issue necessary instructions to the district child protection officers to take assistance of the police, child line, civil society organizations, gram panchayats, Anganwadi and Asha network for identification of such orphan, single parent children. The district magistrates to continue uploading the information as and when received on the Bal Swarad portal on the NCPCR website and to provide the necessary information till stage 5 as it appears on the portal. CWCs to complete the inquiries within the time limit specified in the JJ Act and provide the required assistance and rehabilitation to the orphans. To file a status report before the 23rd of August 2021 after serving a copy of the same on the learned amicus curiae giving particulars of the number of children who have become orphans or have lost either parent after March 2020, the number of children who have been produced before the CWCs and the particulars of the children who have been provided with the benefits of the schemes announced by the respective state government. To provide information regarding the payment of an amount of ours, 2000, under the integrated child protection scheme to each of the eligible children. To ensure that the orphans are permitted to continue in the same school at least for this academic year, be they private schools or government schools. If there are difficulties in the cases of students being permitted to continue their private schools, they may be accommodated under the provisions of the right of children to. Free and Compulsory Education Act 2009. To furnish information on the number of such students studying in private and government schools and the mechanisms implemented to permit them to continue studying in their respective schools. Letter dated the 8th of May 2021 has been written to the Divisional Commissioner Revenue Department to issue necessary directions to ensure adherence of the order of Honble Supreme Court and submit an action taken report by the 16th of August 2021. Letter dated the 8th of May 2021 has been written to DCPOs regarding uploading the data on Bal Swarat portal and ensuring the adherence of the orders of Honble Supreme Court and submit a status of action taken along with the list of children dealt with by the 16th of August 2021. Letter dated the 8th of May 2021 has been written to CWCs regarding ensuring the adherence of the orders of Honble Supreme Court and submit a status of action taken along with the list of children dealt with by the 16th of August 2021. Letter dated the 8th of June 2021 has also been written to district officers DWCD regarding ensuring the adherence of the orders of Honble Supreme Court. A status report will be filed once the required information and action taken report is received from the Office of Divisional Commissioner, CWCs and DCPOs. The proposal with regard to payment of ours. 2000 per month, initially for three months, towards 78 children identified as orphan, single parent has been approved by the worthy director, WCD. The same is being processed further. Honble Delhi High Court Matter W. PC 3031-2020, it's titled, Rakesh Malhotra vs. GNCTD, NDOH, the 23rd of August 2021. Advertisement of the scheme, guidelines issued by the department on the 18th of June 2021 with regard to iFit person and foster parent, e-family-based sponsorship in Delhi and e-fit facility and group foster care. To run campaign for popularization of the said scheme guidelines file already processed with regard to publication of advertisement ongoing process the schemes guidelines wrt vulnerable street children are being published from time to time and is also being acted upon by at the level of various platforms such as cwc's dcpu's wcdh q etc three honble delhi high court matter ndoh the 16th of august 2021 Honble High Court beat its order dated the 14th of December 2020 had constituted a committee concerning the welfare of children housed in children's homes in Delhi and to look into the welfare of such children. The committee comprising of the following members was constituted. Of Mr. B.J. Dev, Chief Secretary, GNCT of Delhi, convener of the committee. B. Mr. Rahul Mera, the then learned senior standing counsel, criminal, Govit. Of NCT of Delhi. C. Mr. H. 
S. Fulka, Leonard Senior Advocate as Amicus Curiae, and D. Ms. Barty Alley, Director of NGO Hawk, Center for Child Rights. The department in terms of the Honble Court orders dated the 14th of December 2020 has already sent the copy of the minutes of the meeting, along with relevant annexures, held on the 18th of January 2021 issued on dated the 21st of January 2021, after the approval of Worthy Chief Secretary Delhi to the then Standing Council Criminal Govet. Of NCT of Delhi. Sub, action taken report in R, O important references dated the 8th of September 2021. This is in reference to communication F, O3 PR, BR, SESI, IMP, REF. 2020 minus 21 220 it stated the 9th of February 2020 in this context the action WRT to references mentioned at serial no 9 and 12 is under s no of references subject action taken 6 request to take urgent action and cognizance in respect of CWCX ATR sent to OSD to Chief Secretary Delhi on the 9th of August 2020 be this office letter no f 61 1392 W P C three thousand six hundred twenty two two thousand twentieths D D C P U D W C D two thousand twenty six thousand six hundred eighty fifths minus eighty seven copy enclosed nine reference from Rajni was in the matter of C O V I D nineteen virus in children home A T N sent to the Secretary Department of Finance G N C T of Delhi on the twenty eighth of August twenty twenty V this office letter no F sixty one eight hundred ninety three audit file D D C P U D W C D twenty fifteen minus sixteen part file five thousand seven hundred sixty seven minus seventy two copy enclosed. 10. Reference from Rajni was in the matter of NCPCR. Latest status regarding development of Gufkal Sheet and incorporating the data. Inspection report of the visit to Rose Udon Girls Shelter Home, Kamla Nagar. SMWC, no. 4 2020th's contagion of COVID-19 virus in children protection homes from DAI. Secretary, Home Department. A communication has been sent to ASD. Registrar, Law, NHRC, V, letter no. F722, Children Death Case File CCI's DCPU3, South ICPS DWCD, 2020 minus 21 dated the 8th of October 2021, wherein copies of relevant reports have been forwarded for perusal of the commission, copy enclosed. Sub, sharing of information with regard to minor children of the patients in the unfortunate eventuality of demise of patients' parents under treatment, Reg. In reference to subject mentioned above, this is to state that beat order dated the 24th of June 2021, the Department of Health and Family Welfare, GNCTD, has already directed its all hospitals to collect information from patients at the time of their admission with regard to their minor children and the same to be shared, forwarded to this. Department for further course of action. In this connection, it is to request you to direct all the hospitals coming under your jurisdiction to provide information with regard to minor children of the patients in the unfortunate eventuality of demise of patients' parents under treatment to the OOJT. Director, CPU, Dept of WCDH. Q on the email ID. SCPS Delhi at Gmail. Com CPUDDWCD at Gmail. Com and in case of any clarification, Ms. Kiran Gandhi, JT. Director, CPU can also be contacted on MOB 9560643483483 being declared as nodal officer for the said purpose. Sub, status on continuation of education in private schools of children who have been rendered orphan, single parent after March 2020 reg. In reference to subject mentioned above, this is to state that Bead Circular dated the 19th of August 2021, the Directorate of Education, Right to Education Branch, GNCT of Delhi has already directed its all DDEs districts to ensure that children who have become orphans are lost apparent after March 2020 either due to COVID-19 or otherwise need due attention to enable them to continue their education in the school. It is also relevant to mention here that the issue regarding continuation of education of children either in government or private school and extending benefits under various schemes towards such children who have lost single, both parents is already being monitored in the ongoing court matters, i.e. SMWPC 4 2020 it's in Ray. Contagion of COVID-19 virus in children protection homes pending before the Honorable Supreme Court of India, NW. PC 3031 2020 it's titled Rakesh Malhotra vs. GNCTD and Connected Matters. In this connection, it is to request you to provide details regarding continuation of schooling of children in private schools who have become orphans, lost a single parent after March 2020 and whether any exemption of fee waiver has been made to ensure continuation of their schooling in the same school. Since a status note has to be filed by the government before Honble High Court by the 7th of September 2021, it is requested that available information may kindly be shared with us by the 3rd of September 2021 on this issues with the approval of competent authority. Sub, wider coverage of beneficiaries, widow and children, under the financial assistance schemes run by the Department of WCD, GNCTD, Reg. In reference to subject mentioned above, this is to state that in the ongoing court matters, i.e. SMWPC 4 2020 in Ray, contagion of COVID-19 virus in children protection homes in W. PC 3031 2020 it's titled, Rakesh Malhotra vs. GNCTD and connected matters pending before the Honorable Supreme Court of India and... Honbal High Court of Delhi respectively, the Honbal Court is regularly monitoring the action taken by the government in respect of assistance to be provided towards all the eligible beneficiaries under various financial assistance schemes run by the department. 
In this connection, it is to request you to issue necessary directions to all the district women and child development officers to ensure that prompt action is taken for enrollment and wider coverage of beneficiaries found eligible under the various financial assistance schemes being run by the Department of Women and Child. Development GNCT of Delhi and the monetary assistance is also released towards them in a time-bound manner. Also share with us data in this regard, as status note has to be filed by the government before Honbal High Court by the 7th of September 2021, it is requested that available information may kindly be shared with us by the 3rd of September 2021 on email scpsdelhi at gmail.com. This issues with the approval of competent authority. Sub, wider coverage of beneficiaries, women and children, under the financial assistance schemes run by the Department of Social Welfare, GNCTD, Reg. In reference to subject mentioned above, this is to state that in the ongoing court matters, i.e., SMWPC 4 2020 in rate contagion of COVID-19 virus in children protection homes and W. PC 3031 2020th titled Rakesh Malhotra vs. GNCTD and connected matters pending before the Honbal Supreme Court of India and Honbal High Court of Delhi respectively, the Honbal Court is regularly monitoring the action taken by the government in respect of assistance to be provided towards all the eligible beneficiaries under various financial assistance schemes run by the Department of Social Welfare, GNCT of Delhi. In this connection, it is to request you to issue necessary directions to all the district social welfare officers to ensure that prompt action is taken for enrollment and wider coverage of beneficiaries found eligible under the various financial assistance schemes being run by the Department of Social Welfare, GNCT of Delhi. And the monetary assistance is also released towards them in a time-bound manner. Also share with us data in this regard, as status note has to be filed by the government before Honbal High Court by the 7th of September 2021, it is requested that available information may kindly be shared with us by the 3rd of September 2021 on email scpsdelhi at gmail. Com. This issues with the approval of competent authority. Sub, providing comments to the letter dated the 31st of August 2021 received from chairperson and three other members of the CWC, I, Nirmal Chaya Complex, New Delhi, Reg. In reference to subject mentioned above, please find it closed here with a copy of letter bearing no. 0403 CWCI NCC 2020 minus 21 1088 stated the 31st of August 2021 along with enclosures 1 to 8 pages which is self-explanatory. It is requested to provide comments on the above within 7 days of receipt of this letter. This issues with the prior approval of the competent authority. Sub compliance of order dated the 9th of September 2021 passed by CWC 7 Southwest District in R. Okay, no. 286 19th reg. In reference to subject mentioned above, I am directed to state that the order dated the 9th of September 2021 passed by the Child Welfare Committee 7, Southwest District needs to be complied with considering the vulnerability and best interest of Ms. Anshu, and subsequently she may also be enrolled in some gainful vocational courses may be found suitable. Further, an action taken report be also sent to O, o the undersigned within three days of receipt of this letter for kind perusal of the competent authority. This issues with the prior approval of Special Secretary Cum Director, WCD. Sub furnishing list of children declared in need of care and protection under Section 37.1 of post March 2020 to the 16th of August 2021 Reg. This is in reference to the ongoing SMWPC 4 of 2020 and Reg contagion of COVID-19 virus in children protection homes pending before the Honbal Supreme Court of India. In this context, it is to inform that pursuant to the last hearing held by the Honbal Court on the 26th of August 2021, the department had a meeting with the LD. Amicus Curiae on the 22nd of September 2021 to discuss various points of action, compliances to be made which are to be included in the next status report to be filed by the department. In this reference, it is important to refer Section 37 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015, here and after referred as JJCPC Act 2015, which stipulates as under. Section 37, 1, the committee on being satisfied through the inquiry that the child before the committee is a child in need of care and protection may, on consideration of social investigation reports submitted by child welfare officer and taking into account the child's wishes in case the child is sufficiently mature to take a view, pass one or more of the following orders, namely, Section 37, 1, a declaration that a child is in need of care and protection. It is also added here that, in the last status report filed by the Department, data of orphan, single parent children as on the 16th of August 2021 was provided which is also given here under for ready reference. Thus, in view of the foregoing, all the chairpersons, child welfare committees are requested to provide following information latest by the 30th of September 2021. 1. Total number along with details of children declared in need of care and protection from March 2020 to the 16th of August 2021 as per Section 37, 1, of the JJCPC Act 2015. 2. Copy of all the relevant orders where children have been declared in need of care and protection from March 2020 to the 16th of August 2021. This is urgent in view of compliance of orders of Honbal Supreme Court of India in the matter SMWPC 4 2020 in rate contagion of COVID-19 virus in children protection homes and hence needs highest priority by all chairman of child welfare committee. This issues with the prior approval of SPL. Secretary Cum Director, WCD. Sub, Inspection of Child Care Institution namely Kasturba Gandhi National Memorial Trust KGNMT, Bhaktawarpur, Delhi, Reg. 
This is in reference to the subject mentioned above. In this regard, I am directed to inform that the competent authority has desired that an inspection of the child care institution, namely Kasturba Gandhi National Memorial Trust, KGNMT, Bhaktawarpur, Delhi, be conducted by the duly constituted district inspection committee. The above decision has been taken pursuant to the incident of escape of five minor girls from the said institution and also in reference to the representation of Shish. Windelsh, advocate, copy and closed for ready reference as received from O.O. Dai. Secretary, Home 2, Home Department, GNCTD of Delhi. Thus, in view of above, it is directed to conduct an inspection of the CCI, namely Kasturba Gandhi National Memorial Trust, KGNMT, Bhaktawarpur, Delhi at the earliest and report be furnished to the undersigned for kind perusal of the competent authority within a week's time positively. The Juvenile Police Unit, ACP Ms. Lacks may be also involved who can be contacted at 9,811,753,304. But under no circumstances report be delayed even if all members not available. This issues with the prior approval of SPL. Secretary Cum Director, WCD. The Honville High Court of Delhi beat its order dated the 29th of September 2021 in CRL. Ref. 1 2020th titled Court on its own motion versus state and conned matters was pleased to pass following directions. Operative part of the order is reproduced here under. 16. Though, as per the clear mandate of the division bench of this court in Bhakpan Bachao Andolan, super children ought to have been produced before the JJBs via video conferencing during the pandemic without delving further into that lapse and with a view to promptly correcting the prevailing anomalous situation, we are persuaded to pass the following directions in line with section 14.4 and in the best interests of affected juveniles for immediate and peremptory compliance. I. In all cases alleging petty offenses against children, juveniles, where the inquiry has been pending and remains inconclusive for longer than one year, regardless of whether the subject child, juvenile, has been produced before the JJB, all such inquiries shall stand terminated with immediate effect. A formal order closing all such matters shall be passed by the JJBs in each file within 022 weeks from the date of this order. And any children, juveniles detained in relation to such inquiries shall be released immediately without waiting for recording the formal orders. In issuing this direction, we take note of the fact that when a report, final report is filed, Alleging a petty offense, it is the state's own case that the subject is a child or juvenile. We are passing these directions ex debito justice to correct an error in the judicial dispensation, since we believe there is no justification in keeping such matters pending any longer. The copy of the above order is also being attached herewith for ready reference. In light of the above directions, all the superintendents, person in charges of observation homes, place of safety, boys and girls both are directed to take immediate appropriate steps and furnish an action taken report indicating the figures as desired above. The ATR must be furnished to the OO undersigned latest by underscore this issues with the prior approval of the competent authority this matter may be given top priority sub crl ref 1 2020th titled court on its own motion versus state and conned matters reg the honorable high court of delhi beat its order dated the 29th of september 2021 in crl ref 1 2020th titled court on its own motion versus state and conned matters was pleased to pass inter alia following directions operative part of the order is reproduced here under 16 Though, as per the clear mandate of the division bench of this court in Bhakpan Bachao Andolan, super children ought to have been produced before the JJBs via video conferencing during the pandemic without delving further into that lapse and with a view to dated the 29th of September 20, motion versus state and conned matters reg. The Honorable High Court of Delhi beat its order dated the 29th of September 2021 in CRL. Ref. 1 2020th titled court on its own motion versus state and conned matters was pleased to pass inter alia following directions. Operative part of the order is reproduced here under. 16. Though, as per the clear mandate of the division bench of versus state and conned matters reg, the Honorable High Court of Delhi beat its order dated the 29th of September 2021 in CRL. Ref. 1 2020th titled court on its own motion versus state and conned matters was pleased to pass inter alia following directions. Operative part of the order is reproduced here under. 16. Though, as per the clear mandate of the division bench of this court in Bhakpan Bachao Andolan, super children ought to have been produced before the JJBs via video conferencing during the pandemic without delving further into that lapse and with a view to promptly correcting the prevailing anomalous situation, we are persuaded to pass the following directions, in line with section 14.4 and in the best interests of affected juveniles for immediate and peremptory compliance. I. In all cases alleging petty offenses against children, juveniles, where the inquiry has been pending and remains inconclusive for longer than one year, regardless of whether the subject child, juvenile, has been produced before the JJB, all such inquiries shall stand terminated with immediate effect. A formal order closing all such matters shall be passed by the JJBs in each file within 022 weeks from the date of this order. And any children, juveniles detained in relation to such inquiries shall be released immediately without waiting for recording the formal orders. In issuing this direction, we take note of the fact that when a report, final report is filed, alleging a petty offense, it is the state's own case, two weeks from the date of this order. And any children, juveniles detained in relation to such inquiries shall be released immediately without waiting for recording the formal orders. In issuing this direction, we take note of the fact that when a report, final report is filed, alleging a petty offense, it is the state's own case that the subject is a child or juvenile. We are passing these directions ex debito justice to correct an error in the judicial dispensation, since we believe there is no justification in keeping such matters pending any longer. E. 
Insofar as cases against children, juveniles who are alleged to have committed petty offenses, where inquiries are pending for between 06 months and 01 year, the state is directed to apprise this court of the number of such cases pending in each JJB in Delhi along with the date of institution of the inquiry and the date of first production, if any, in each case, within 10, 10 days from the date of this order, so that further necessary directions in that behalf may be passed by this court. 17. We make it clear that the termination of inquiries as per our directions under Section 14 would not in any manner deter the preparation and implementation of requisite rehabilitation and social reintegration plans as contemplated inter alia in Chapters B, B and 7 of the JJ Act, which would be preceded in accordance with Law. 18. List for further consideration on the 10th of December 2021. The copy of the above order is also being attached, which is self-explanatory itself. In light of the above directions, all the juvenile justice boards are requested to comply with the Honble Court directions and provide the relevant data so that the same may be placed before the Honble High Court on before the next date of hearing, i.e. the 10th of December 2021. An early action is requested, please. Sub I and O. 106,492,021 in SMWPC 4 of 2020 in the matter of re contagion of COVID-19 virus in children protection homes and in the matter of we the women of India versus Union of India and ORS. Reg, please find enclosed here with the copy of I and O. 106,492,021st filed by the petitioner namely, We the Women of India versus Union of India and ORS, which is self-explanatory in itself. The above application has been filed by the petitioner concerning waiver of school fee and continuation of education of minor children, single parent, and is thus the same as being forwarded to your good self for taking appropriate action under intimation to this office. In supersession of all the previous orders, the management committee in our Osadu Sundar Singh Welfare Society, Balbihar Children Home, Delhi is hereby reconstituted under Sub Rule 3 of Rule 39 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children, Model Rules, 2016 as per details given below. S. No. Details of officers, officials. Designation in the management committee. 1. District Child Protection Officer, District Child Protection Unit IV. Chairperson. 2. Child Welfare Officer, Balbihar Children Home. Member. 3. Medical Officer. Member. 4. Counselor, Balvi, her children home. Member. 5. Teacher. Member. 6. Social worker member, CWC 7. Member. 7. Child representatives, Balvi, her children home. Member. 8. NGO representative, Kushi, Mr. Narendra Kumar Guy. Member. 9. Chairperson, CWCV. Special invitee. 10. Officer in charge, Balvi, her children home. Member secretary, the NGO representative, Shish. Narendra Kumar Guy shall extend full cooperation to the chairpersons, management committee members. The management committee shall work as per the mandatory requirement prescribed under Rule 39 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children, Model Rules, 2016. Sub, CRL, Ref. 1 2020th titled Court on its own motion versus state and conated matters reg. The Honble High Court of Delhi beat its order dated the 29th of September 2021 in CRL. Ref. 1 2020th titled Court on its own motion versus state and conated matters had inter alia directed as under. 16. Though, as per the clear mandate of the division bench of this court in Bhakpan Bachao Andalan, super children ought to have been produced before the JJBs via video conferencing during the pandemic without delving further into that lapse and with a view to promptly correcting the prevailing anomalous situation, we are persuaded to pass the following directions in line with section 14.4 and in the best interests of affected juveniles for immediate and peremptory compliance. I, in all cases alleging petty offenses against children, juveniles, where the inquiry has been pending and remains inconclusive for longer than one year, regardless of whether the subject child, juvenile, has been produced before the JJB, all such inquiries shall stand terminated with immediate effect. A formal order closing all. Such matters shall be passed by the JJBs in each file within 022 weeks from the date of this order. And any children, juveniles detained in relation to such inquiries shall be released immediately without waiting for recording the formal orders. In issuing this direction, we take note of the fact that when a report, final report is... Filed alleging a petty offense, it is the state's own case that the subject is a child or juvenile. We are passing these directions ex debito justice to correct an error in the judicial dispensation, since we believe there is no justification in keeping such matters pending any longer. E. Insofar as cases against children, juveniles who are alleged to have committed petty offenses, where inquiries are pending for between 06 months and 01 year, the state is directed to apprise this court of the number of such cases pending in each JJB in Delhi along with the date of institution of the inquiry and the date of first production, if any, in each case, within 10, 10 days from the date of this order, so that further necessary directions in that behalf may be passed by this court. Accordingly, be letter dated the 10th of April 2021, all the LD. Juvenile Justice Boards were requested to comply with the directions mentioned as above and to prove the relevant data so that the same be placed before the Honble High Court on or before the next date of hearing, i.e. the 10th of December 2021. It is further a prize here that today a call was received from LD. Additional counsel, GNCT of Delhi thereby showing displeasure about non-receipt of relevant data to be placed before the Honble Court and further directed that the same to be provided to her within a day. In view of above, it is once again requested to kindly intervene in the matter so that relevant data information is received in the department from JJBs for onward submission to the LD. ASC, GNCTD. An early action is requested please. Sub, CRL. Ref. 
one 2020th titled Court on its own motion versus state and punitive matters reg. This is in continuation to this officer letter dated the 10th of April 2021 on the subject mentioned above. In this reference, please find enclosed here with copy of communication received from O.O. the Adult. Commissioner of Police, Special Police for Women and Children, SPUWC, Malvia Children, Malvia Nagar, wherein. Data, information pertaining to pertaining to CCLs for the period March 2020 to till October 2021 have been provided. The said data shared by SPUWC is also reproduced here under for ready refense. The number of juveniles against whom petty offenses are registered in the general diary at the various police stations from March 2020 to till October 2021. In these cases, how many of them have been released to their parents? Out of the cases registered from March 2020 till October 2021 for petty offenses, how many juveniles were apprehended? Of these cases, registered for petty offenses against juveniles from March 2020 till October 2021, how many children have been produced by before the JJB till today? Further, as per discussion held with LD. Additional counsel, GNCT of Delhi, the data, information provided by the LD. Juvenile Justice Boards in response to letter dated the 10th of April 2021 of the Department of WCD, GNCTD requires to be reconciled. Thus, all the LD. Juvenile Justice Boards are requested to the needful based on the data, information provided by the OOSPUWC, Malvia Nagar. Sub, CRL, Ref, 1 2020th titled Court on its own motion versus state and punitive matters reg. This is in continuation to this office letter dated the 10th of April 2021 on the subject mentioned above. In this reference, please find enclosed here with copy of communication received from additional standing counsel GNCTD. In view of the order of the Honville High Court, the following information is sought from all the JJBs. 1. No. If children, against whom general diary entry for petty offense has been made by police, are produced before JJB within 24 hours, in terms of para 13E of the said order dated the 29th of September 2021. This would include even children released to their parents. 2. No. If cases closed in terms of para 16I of the order dated the 29th of September 2021. 3. No. Of cases pending between six months and one year in the date of institution of inquiry and the date of first production. 4. No. Of children involved in petty offense who have been in observation homes for more than six months. And why their cases have not been disposed of within the time stipulated in Section 14 for JJ since the report has to be filed within 10 days from the date of the order of the Honorable High Court, i.e. the 10th of December 2021, your good self is requested to provide the requisite data as specified above within a week positively. Sub, implementation of the order dated the 26th of August 2021 in SMWPC 4-2020 in Ray, contagion of COVID-19 virus reg. This is in continuation to this officer letter dated the 9th of October 2021 followed by reminder dated the 17th of September 2021, copies enclosed on the subject mentioned above. In this reference please find enclosed here with a performa containing details of data on orphan, single parent cases is on the 16th of August 2021, submitted to Honble Court along with columns requiring some additional information. As the matter is coming up for hearing on the 26th of October 2021, all the child welfare committees are requested to fill the requisite details. Information pertaining to their CWCs is per attached performa and to send back the same latest by the 21st of October 2021 for incorporating it into the status report to be filed before the Honville Apex Court. Sub CRL Ref 1 2020th titled Court on its own motion versus state and connected matters reg. This is in continuation to the letter dated the 14th of October 2021, whereby it was requested to provide requisite information as per the instructions received through email from Ms. Nandita Rao, LD. ASC, GNCT of Delhi based on the directions given by the Honville High Court of Delhi on the 10th of December 2021, order dated the 10th of December 2021 awaited. In this connection, please find enclosed here with a performa for providing the desired information as received on the 20th of October 2021 from LD. ASC, GNCT of Delhi. All the juvenile justice boards are once again requested to comply with the Honville Court directions and provide the relevant data as per attached performance so that the same may filed in the Honville High Court before the next date of hearing. An early action is requested, please. Sub, implementation of the order dated the 26th of October 2021 in SMWPC 4 2020 in Ray, contagion of COVID-19 virus reg. In reference to the above mentioned subject, I am directed to forward here with a copy of order dated the 26th of October 2021 passed by the Honville Supreme Court of India. The relevant part of the order dated the 26th of October 2021 is being reproduced here under for ready reference. The learned amicus curiae has submitted a note on rehabilitation of street children. He has referred to a standard operating procedure for care and protection of children in street situations prepared by the National Commission for Protection of Child Rights in the year 2020, NCPCR SOP. In the said document, NCPCR relied upon the National Plan of Action for Children 2016 and the Commission for Protection of Child Rights Act 2005 to highlight the need for rehabilitation of children in street situations, CIS. The NCPCR has suggested in the SOP that teams can be constituted by statutory bodies like SCPCRs and the District Child Protection Mechanism for conducting survey or adopting other means to collect information, data on children in street situations and carry out rescue operations within the ecosystem created by the JJ Act. 
the state governments, union territories are also directed to file a status report on the rehabilitation of children in street situations in accordance with the SOP within a period of two weeks from today. Thus, in view of the directions contained in the order dated the 26th of October 2021, it is requested to direct all the district magistrates to provide comments, action taken in accordance with the SOP prepared by NCPCR, copy and closed so that the directions given by the Honble Court are complied with in letter and spirit and to enable the department file a suitable reply before the Honble Supreme Court. In the past, department had also shared the policy document of SAMPARC, under which district-level task force was to be created under the chairmanship of district magistrates with work related to street children as one of the primary mandates of the committee. Sub, implementation of the order dated the 26th of October 2021 in SMWPC 4 2020 it's in Ray, contagion of COVID-19 virus reg. In reference to the above mentioned subject, I am to forward here with a copy of order dated the 26th of October 2021 passed by the Honorable Supreme Court of India. The relevant part of the order dated the 26th of October 2021 is being reproduced here under for ready reference. The learned amicus curiae has submitted a note on rehabilitation of street children. He has referred to a standard operating procedure for care and protection of children in street situations prepared by the National Commission for Protection of Child Rights in the year 2020, NCPCR SOP. In the said document, NCPCR relied upon the National Plan of Action for Children 2016 and the Commission for Protection of Child Rights Act 2005 to highlight the need for rehabilitation of children in street situations, sis. The NCPCR has suggested in the SOP that teams can be constituted by statutory bodies like SCPCRs and the District Child Protection Mechanism for conducting survey or adopting other means to collect information, data on children in street situations and carry out rescue operations within the ecosystem created by the JJ Act. The state governments, union territories are also directed to file a status report on the rehabilitation of children in street situations in accordance with the SOP within a period of two weeks from today. Thus, in view of the directions contained in the order dated the 26th of October 2021, it is requested to take appropriate action and to send comments, action taken to the department in accordance with the SOP prepared by NCPCR, copy and closed so that the directions given by the Honble Court are complied with in letter and spirit and to enable the department file a suitable reply before the Honble Supreme Court. Sub, providing comments to the NCPCR's letter dated the 14th of October 2021 reg. In reference to the subject mentioned above, please find enclosed here with a copy of the email communication dated the 18th of October 2021 along with copy of NCPCR letter dated the 14th of October 2021 which are self-explanatory in itself. The chairperson, NCPCR through his letter dated the 14th of October 2021 has requested to look into the matter regarding complaint against Delhi government for using minor children of Delhi for in promotional advertisement shoot, violating COVID-19 pandemic protocol guild lines and endangering lives of minor school children. Thus, it is requested to look into this matter and provide comments on above to this office at the earliest. Sub, providing comments to the NCPCR's letter dated the 14th of October 2021 reg. In reference to the subject mentioned above, please find enclosed here with a copy of the email communication dated the 18th of October 2021 along with copy of NCPCR letter dated the 14th of October 2021 which are self-explanatory in itself. The chairperson, NCPCR through his letter dated the 14th of October 2021 has requested to look into the matter regarding complaint against Delhi government for using minor children of Delhi for in promotional advertisement shoot, violating COVID-19 pandemic protocol guild lines and endangering lives of minor school children. Thus, it is requested to look into this matter and provide comments on above to this office at the earliest.